I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you say living forever. One of the ways to know that you are successful is in knowing who you are. Let me ask you to listen. One of the ways to know that you are successful is in knowing who you are. In one of the ways to know that you are successful is in knowing who you are. Number two point. In also knowing your source. In knowing your source. In knowing your source. Understanding purpose. Now, I would like us to listen. God has eternal life. That is, that is, God has a life that can die. That's what I mean by eternal life. That means that God can't die. And then whatever that originates from God must not be made subject to death. Let me say again. I said, God can't die. Now, God can't die because God exists on his own. Let me say again. I said, God can die because God exists on his own. Why God will live forever is because God exists on his own. The nature of eternal life is the nature of self-existence rather than your paper. The nature of eternal life is the nature of self-existence. That is, God doesn't need somebody else to exist. He doesn't need help to exist. Now, when Jesus came to the earth, huh? Jesus received ability. He received ability also to exist on his own. That means that Jesus doesn't need help to exist. And then in John chapter 10, verse 10, when Jesus came to the earth, he gave us ability to also exist on our own. Now, there are, what is called eternal life is ability to exist on your own. Now, it is not possible for death to kill any man that has ability to exist on his own. I'm going to discuss the manifestation of that ability when we read the book of John, chapter 5, 26. John Gospel, chapter 5, verse 26. I'm preaching on living forever. Excuse me. Try and look up. God does not separate your life from the revelation that guided it. Let me say again. God doesn't separate your life from what you know. Simpler. Now, what you know is supposed to guide your thought. Let me say again. I said, what you know is supposed to guide your thought. So you live from the thought of your knowledge. So if you look at the book of John Gospel, somebody help me read chapter 5, 26. He said, for as the Father had life in himself, for as the Father had life in himself, so had he given to the Son to have life in himself. So has he given to the Son to have life in himself, as the Father have life in Himself, that word is a technical word. Please, if you're here, that word that's a word we call technical word. The word is technical. God have life in Himself. Now, when Jesus came to the earth, Jesus also had life where in Himself. Now, that life He had in Himself is called eternal life. That is life that cannot die. Now in John 10.10, 10, the Bible said the purpose of his coming primarily is to make us to have life in ourselves. You're going to follow gradually so that before I get into what I'm talking. In John 10.10, 10, somebody read the book of John 10.10, 10, the thief comment. Not but. But to steal, but to steal, to kill, to, to kill, steal, to destroy, to destroy. I am come that they might have life. Yes, and that they might have it more abundantly. He, he said, "I came purposefully to make to give you this type of life that God have, which I have too. I came to give you that you might also have that life, eternal life, to exist on your own. Excuse me, every kind of life." Have his destiny. 
every kind of life. So if you want to know the destiny of every life, you will know the destiny of that life from the nature of the life. Now, if you also want to know a nature of a life, you will know the nature of that life from the way the life is lived. Every life introduces itself from the way that life is being lived. So, so you, you don't separate the destiny of a life from the way the life is lived. People are inspired to live the life they have. It, it will not take me time. You, you might be claiming anything you want to claim you can become. But I know what you can become when I see the way you live the only life you have. I said, I, I will know what you will become when I see the way you live. Because you cannot separate your destiny from your life. Now, it, 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 oh my God. And every life has its light. I don't want to talk about light now. If you look at chapter 17 of the book of, of As of Apostles, the Bible says, it is in him we move and live and have our existence. Because we are offspring of this God who exists in himself. Now listen. I've been to the grave many times. Those who are in the grave didn't understand this. There is no man that understands what I'm sharing that dies. Because this revelation has its light. Before I go to the book of Acts of Apostles and tell you, I'm, I'm the asked to read. So that I can begin to ask you, in, in what revelation do you move and live? In what light do you move and live? In what encounter do you have your being? It, it, Job said in Job 29 verse 3, he said, when the lamp of God was upon my head, through his light, I walked through darkness. When the lamp of God was on my head, through, through the light of that lamp, I went through darkness. Maybe I should show you Job 29. Don't close that, don't close that scripture. I'm going to come to it. Job 29, verse number 3. Job 29, 3. The book of Job 29, verse 3. When his candle shined upon my head. He said, when his candle shined upon my head. And when by his light I walked through darkness. He said, and when by his light I walked through darkness. That means that, and excuse me, now listen, now listen. What rules the grave is darkness. Grave is a pit of silence. It's a pit, it's a valley. Maybe someone I'm not told you. That is why... People who die are stink. You know, the spirit of death stink. You know, like a bee. Death stink, people. Stink. There is no man that died that was not stinked. That's what the Bible said. The stink of death. Something bites men to death. So all the men that died, they were killed by themselves. Seventeen hours of apostles, we are offspring. I need to tell you, I said, Daddy is root and destiny. If you stem from a root, you are still part of that root. If you came from God, you are always part of God. And Satan don't want you to understand it. Let me say again, I said, if you came from God, you are always part of God. But Satan doesn't want you. He doesn't want you to enjoy. Satan knows the, the omnipotence of fellowship. He doesn't want you to live in the consciousness of a blessed woman who enjoys certain fellowship that shield you from ordinariness. So when Adam was in Eden, the woman knew. The Satan knew what the woman and her husband was enjoying. And she was very angry with that. So what she did was through fellowship, through fellowship, took the woman and her husband out of the garden of relevance. 
And the Bible says in chapter 3 that when they went out, the eyes of Adam opened. And he began to say to himself, Dust you are, dust you will be. When Adam was in Eden, Adam couldn't know that he was dust. Excuse me. The most powerful man on earth is a man that can die. The deepest revelation on earth is immortality. Open your ear here. Don't play with what goes inside you because it's always part of you. Just like Ad, just like Satan depended on fellowship to take the woman and husband out of the place of promise. I am depending on fellowship this morning to announce you into the next level of your life and to bring every miracle you're supposed to have to where you are. I'm trying to take advantage of fellowship because I know the power. I know the omnipotence of fellowship. Listen, before one hour, I am going to transform you miraculously into a way that you can no longer stay outside God. In God, you are invisible. In God, you are unapproachable. In God, you are shielded by His light. Sometimes when believers leave their place, they, leave, they, they are subjected to shame and miracle. They become naked. And then when they are naked, they struggle. There are things you naturally get from God without struggle because of who you are. Let me say again. I said there are things you naturally get from God without prayer. That is when you go home, you sit down. Those things come to you because of who you are already. Not because you are doing fasting and prayer. In fact, most of the miracles that happen to believers, that should happen to believers, are miracles that happen to them because of who they are. You see, because God doesn't want us to relate with Him in prayer. Bothering Him. He wants us to relate with Him from what He has already made us. We are part of the house, so we can't behave like strangers. There is no intelligent son that begged his father for inheritance. Daddy knows that that thing that he has is your own. He knows already. So why will you beg daddy to give you what he has when you are already a son? Even when the prodigal son in 15 of, of, of Luke was not, was not worthy to have it, his father still gave it to him. Because of places. The boy didn't go to his father two times. If you look at the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 17, I want you to upgrade your value. Acts of Apostles, chapter 17, somebody may read one verse. It is in 28, 1720 as of apostles. Go ahead. But in he said, For he will live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poet have said, For we are also his offspring. The Bible says, We are offspring. That means we came from God and we are in God. Now, maybe I need to remind you that in the book of Genesis chapter 1, 26, 27, and 28. He said, let us make Chris Christian in our own image and after our likeness that he might be in charge for us. In Psalm chapter 8, 3 to 6, he said, why are you mindful of Chris Christian? That you gave him the dominion of your life. A lot of people want to be rich in Lagos, but they don't care about the nature of life in them. A lot of people want to bind the devil, but they don't care about the light of their life. A lot of people want to enjoy promotion in 2015, but they don't care about their impartation. A lot of people want to be one thing or the other, they want one more of miracles, and they don't care about the realm from where they see God. There is something is called realm of operation. Like the way I am here, I, I, I can't be sick. It's not a confession that comes from prayer. It's a confession that comes from understanding and knowledge of what I'm talking about. So there is a dominion of every life. Every life has a dominion. Now, in the book of Colossians, chapter 115, 
He is the visible image of the invisible God. <laughs> he is He is the one that you can see that represents the one you can see. And he, he is representing him in life. <laughs> so Jesus represent, is representing God because he has the life of God. Excuse me. After this service, don't waste your time chasing things that you don't need. Sometimes when I see young pastors, they will, be, they will put their heart here, put their heart here, say, listen, Satan is crafty. Be careful of what you are doing with your life. Be very, very crafty. Be very, very what? Be very, very careful. Some of these things you run up and down, looking for here, looking for here, you don't need them. You don't need them. All my life, I've never just anything I don't need. When we are building this place, I said, I discovered that all my life, what I need is only one room. And I'm living in one room upstairs. I need one room. So why would I be bothering myself trying to build a house here, build a house here, build a house here? I don't have children, I will not have. I don't need children. I don't have wife. I won't have. I won't, I won't have in 20 years, probably 30 years, all my life. This life I am living, this life I'm talking about, this Zoe life, doesn't need a wife. Now, now, sometimes that's what I'm talking about. When you have life, you should be able to know the kind of the life. This, this life I have must not marry wife. It's a life. Now this life I have don't need children. Trying to marry wife is to abuse it and then to destroy it and then to deny it. That is the way you will live a life. You deny the value of that life. If I had married a wife and then started bearing children, I would devalue immortality. Maybe you don't understand. Maybe you didn't hear what I said. Excuse me, a lot of people devalue their life from the way they live it. They devalue the worth of their life. They, they use wrong choice to destroy the life, the value of their life. Shall I go ahead? Every life that is eternal is a hidden life, is a point. Every life that is eternal is a hidden life. Somebody say hidden life. I didn't hear you. Every life that is self-existent is a hidden life. Now, lives that can die are hidden in themselves. That means that anybody that can die must learn to hide his life. Because people protect their life where they hide it. Let me thank you. I said people protect their life, preserve it where they do what? Where they hide it. So if you want to know the value of a life, you will discover the munition where the life is hidden. So I said God can die because God protects himself where he hides himself. He hides himself in the light of his life rather than your paper. When Jesus came to the earth, Jesus began to quarry, mine, harvest, explore the light of his life. After he explored it, he hid his life in it. Now, now I, want to, I want to make a point to you. Excuse me. Anybody on earth who didn't mind the light of his very life will not be protected by God. God doesn't protect people from outside. He depends on the mind light of their life to protect them. God protects men where they hide themselves rather than your paper. God protects men where they hide themselves. Please, why I'm teaching what I'm teaching is because of the pricelessness of your transformation. The 
pricelessness of your church. All the men who enjoyed glory of immortality to an extent, sometimes to the fullness, like Moses. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 10, that he put fail upon his face. It is not God that immortalized Jesus. It's not God that put fail upon Moses. Moses went to the mountain and fasted and prayed until he put fail. I'll go to it later. Hiding in the light of your life. Light on your paper. Hiding in the light of your life. Hiding your life in the light of your life. I want to make a point, very, very beautiful point. The value of every life is introduced on earth by the light of that life rather than your people. The value of every life is introduced on earth by the light of that life. Now every life has its light. In another way, the light of your life is the hiding place of your life. The light of your life. So I said, when Jesus came to the earth, the man Jesus hid. When Jesus came to the earth, the man Jesus hid the life of Christ in his light. Let me say again. The, 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 when, when Jesus Christ came to the earth, Christ, the incarnate spirit, the visionary spirit of Jesus, Christ that have the life of God, hid the man. The man Jesus was hidden in the light. Of Christ. So what he did, he was to, for 30 years, he was mining, he was mining the light. Or he mined the light of Christ. Now if you are here, there is light in your life. And that light in your life is meant for you to mine. Now because you have to mine it to hide in it. Satan fears our hiding place. Now, excuse me, excuse me. People are protected more in the light of their life than in prayer. Because the major aspect of your life, the major pattern of your life goes on when you are not aware. I said the major battles of men's life go on when they are not aware of the battle. They are not aware, and in case you are here, you like prayer. I pray too much too. I do, but I do prayer is one of the things I do so much. But I want to, I want to understand. Satan doesn't fear your prayer because he knows you will stop. Now, when, when, when you pray so much and stop, Satan doesn't fear when you're praying because the guy knows you will stop. Now, when you, when you pray and stop, he will go to your value. He, he will go to the storehouse of your munition. That is where you are hidden. Your hiding place. I don't want to be studying in this service. John Gospel, chapter 1. One to four. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. John Gospel chapter 1, 1 to 4. The Bible said in the beginning was that word. And that then that word was with God because that word was God. Then he said in two, he said the word, that particular word, which is Christ, was with God in the beginning. He said, For he made all things through Jesus by the word. Then he said, For that word had the life. In the word was a life, and the life was the light of man. The, the word was life, and the life produced light. Now he said later, he said, everything that came into this world was lightened by the light of that life. He said, that light is true light. Why it is true light is because it is a light that can't quench. Because it was produced from eternal life. There are, excuse me, there are so many universities in Nigeria, private government universities, they, they produce light. But if you look at the book of John Gospel chapter 8, 12, the Bible, Jesus said, he said, I am the light of the world, that whosoever that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall walk in the light of that life. So because the life of Jesus is eternal, his light 
his light has ability to go around the world. It is not every revelation that has power to empower the world. There are revelations. What we are waiting for is the coming of the Lion of Judah. Is the coming of a new revelation. The value of the Lion of Judah is in the revelation. When Jesus came to the earth, the Jews were already knowledgeable. They were teachers of the Lord. They had PhD in law. In, they were Pharisees. They were Sadducees. They were learned people. They were Sanhedrin. But when Jesus came to the earth, he said, you guys, you will perish in your darkness. Jesus looked at men that were learned in the law and said, you are dark. Because the light that they were manifesting has lost relevance. So they were counted with dark men. There are so many people in Nigeria who are claiming to be lighted men, but they are already dark. Because the light they are boasting with is a dead light. It's a, it's a, it's a, a kind of light that is equal to darkness. Because the light is, has lost its relevance. There are so many books that dead men wrote. Those books as a measure of light. But they could, the light couldn't keep them from dying. The day I went to the grave, I saw so many gods that is a lighting personality in the grave. Men that came there with their brightness. So they were manifesting brightness in the grave. But they were already dead. Because their brightness could not could not stop death from killing them. In two of the book of Daniel, the stone without hand came what was pouring from God to smash an image. To do what? To smash an image. Now the image had a brightness. But why the stone without hand came to smash that image was because the stone without hand, the brightness of that stone was no longer relevant. The light of the statue. As I'm talking to you here, I know lights are no longer relevant. That's why I don't worry about I don't waste my time reading every book. Who am I doing with books? Those books, some of them have origin in that image. Some of us are here, don't you know that medicine can help you? Drugs can help you to an extent. Is you off? But don't us die. Because the level of brightness in medicine cannot stop sickness. You'll be fine in this service. You'll be fine. Almost everywhere in the world, preachers are believing in death. And they are still preaching. Giving people communion of the dead. How can a man that believes in death be given communion? When you go to a church where a man believes in communion and eat the communion from a dead man's hand, he baptizes you to death. And the, you need someone to tell you that God is not in the grave. So grave is a value where God can be found. Let me say again. I say grave is a place where God cannot be found. So when people die, they disfellowship themselves permanently from God's presence. Let me say again. I said, when people die, they disfellowship themselves. 20 of the book of Luke, verse, verse number 38, there is no God in the grave. For he is not a God of the dead. He said, for he is not a God of the dead. But of the living. He are born of the living. For all live. Unto him. He said he is not the God of the dead, but what? But he is the God of the living. He is the God of the living. So what will he be doing in the dead? With the dead? Now, 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 let's, let's, let's come to class properly. The sting of death. First Corinthians. Chapter 15. Now some people, some people are, are meant to be believe, are meant to be are deceived by people who are going up anywhere. Now please, can you look up? 
Can you look up here? Try and pay attention. There are some things you will never know until you pay the price. Let me say again. I said there are things you will never know until you pay price to know them. So God doesn't go about gossiping around to people who are busy with themselves. The secret of God are meant for seekers. So when somebody when somebody hear me now on television or I mean maybe in the city or radio or anywhere the city is, I said, oh, what is that I'm talking about? Don't pay attention or I walk away. He has not paid enough attention. He has not paid. No, he has not paid enough attention. I prayed and fasted for 38 years as a junior. Before God told me that man was not going to want to die. I was asking, I said, Lord, why did you wait for me this long? Before you can tell me that man was not born to die. Why didn't you tell me this one minute it started? He said, I was speaking, but you can't hear. There are so many things God is saying, but people can't hear because their ears are not ready. People get their ears ready through seeking. When you put in your heart with all manner of problems, you can't hear. So when I became a preacher, I made up my mind that nothing will worry me. If somebody didn't hear what I said. I said when I became a preacher I made up my mind and that I'm not going to divert my prayer to go and need them somewhere and say Lord I need money I need money to pay school fees I need money to travel to America what I need cannot be given to me in America it's not money that I need I need myself I don't need things I need it's myself I need I need myself not things Someone said you need a boy, you need a son. I said, the son I want to I want to give back to. Do you need to be more than me? I should be vulnerable first. What am I doing in America? To go, make my, to, go to go to go to a strange country and make myself stupid. What will I be looking for? To convert an American man? Why will I beg someone to hear something that will bless his life? He needs to pay. And then I'll carry myself. Something I have used my life. That if I go to America, there's something else I want. There's something else I want. It's not gospel. There is something else. There is a deception I want. Somebody said, hey, go to America to say, excuse me. Americans should preach themselves. When God raised high priests, he raised them for his people. He didn't raise me for American people. Raise an altar for the capital Messiah in the heart of Africa. Chris Christian is an apostolic prophet who has written over 75 books and still writing. You can get a copy of his revelational and life-changing books like Jesus Who is Christ. The agelessness of God. Understanding the act of hearing the voice of God. Rapture. The second person of every mass thought. Excuse me, don't talk that. You don't know my value. I know my value. Excuse me, you cannot, you, you cannot get to my person when you're giving me something that's smaller than who I am. If you're giving me something that's smaller than who I am, you should kneel down. Because whether you give me that or not, I am already who I am. I said, when you're giving me something that is who I am, that is smaller than who I am. You should kneel down. Because even if you didn't give it to me, I am already who I am.
excuse me, is he tired that is making me shepherd? Jacket. Ah? Huh? Ah? Huh? Shoe? Making me shepherd? The shoe is more than what I'm talking. Shoe? I'm talking about Italian, you're talking about shoe. This shoe we want out. Am I am I happy with something? Now I am talking from the quotient of men like us. Now, if you are not in my class, other things might make meaning to you. I don't envy you. I'm preaching from another, from a class. I said, in the other time, they told you that death is the destiny of man. I'm saying in this service from scripture that death stinks. Stinks. It has stink. Every day, Satan wants to sting believers. And they, they submit themselves to sting so that they can go to the valley. It's not that the, it's not a man doesn't have it's not Satan doesn't have power over man because Satan is a cherub. Except that man willingly through ignorance submit submitted himself to Satan and then death sting him. First Corinthians chapter 15. I want you to see some of us have not seen that death sting men. Stink. Something that stinks is your friend. First Corinthians chapter 15, 55. He said, Oh death. Where is that sting? He said, Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave. Where is that victory? 56. He said, The sting of death is sin. Is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. The Bible said, He said, When death wants to sting, death depends on sin to sting. Now let me ask you to please listen. There are so many people that death has been stinging, but they don't know that death is stinging them. I would have told you, not, if not because of time, I would have told you some few ways that death stinks people. Secretly. You know, you know, I told you that anytime God wants to do something new on earth, He raises prophets. There are so many people that death stinks. They don't know death stinks them. Because they can't see the sting of death. But because of covenant and the prophetic eyes, I know when death stinks men. Some of the sickness in people's body came there from sting of death. Death is stinging them like a, like a scorpion. We scatter all over their body. Somebody said I was sleeping and something, something like something bites me. And then and from that bite, something started moving around all, all over our body. It's this thing. It's this, this thing of death. They just think you. And then introduce movement. To possess the system. It, 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 it's what? Now that think you, that think not us, think people because that is an enemy. Whatever that think you is an enemy. All the men that cry were defeated by their enemy. In this service, there will be deliverance. There will be freedom. Death will never sting you. I didn't hear your amen. We're going to bring back your enemy under your feet and crush it. If we go back to the other verses of the Bible, other verses of the Bible in the book of Lapha's Corinthians, verse, verse 26. He said, The last enemy to be destroyed is death. That means that, that means I said death stink because death is an enemy. Solomon, go ahead. Death, let us see that death is an enemy. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Yes. The last enemy that shall be destroyed. Can somebody say death is an enemy? Now, when the people, when the people say, when the people come and claim, people come to claim to us that that death is the will of God. Do they know that death is an enemy? An enemy is somebody that is against you. Somebody you need to fight. Somebody you must hate. Somebody that wants to kill you. Something that is against you is your enemy. Something that hates you. Death. And then how can somebody bring a fallen theology to tell you that you should submit to an enemy? All the men that were killed were manipulated by the sting of darkness, by the sting of death. That's why the Bible says in the book of Psalm, Genesis chapter 3. He said, When Adam sinned against God, 
and went out of Eden. When God began to curse Adam through Adam. When God began to curse Adam through Adam, he said, He said, You're going to feed yourself from the sweat of the field because now you are naked. He said, Adam, you're going to feed yourself from, from the field of the of from the sweat of the field because you are naked. He said, because you are naked, you are dust, and dust you will be. That's why we up to today, when people go to when people go to grave, when men die and carry carry sand and cast on the grave, they renew covenant with grave. There is nobody who cast sand in the tomb that didn't die. When you say dust, when, when they say dust to dust, and you carry dust and throw there, you, 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 we call it the baptism of death. You introduce yourself to grave. The angel of death will go and write your name in the book of death and be waiting for you. And when they write your name, they will introduce a particular sickness on you and give you time. That is why if you are here, sickness will not have power over you. You see, because sickness opens the gate. Opens the gate of death to people. Diseases, infirmities. They process people gradually to the grave. And when people accept that they abuse redemption. If the Bible says he has tested death for all men. And you are saved to die. You have insulted God. So all the men who are in the grave, all of them, are, God is angry with them because they insulted God. I said all the people who are where? All of them, they insulted God. That is why they are in the grave. What I mean by insult that Jesus has paid price. He abolished it. So why did you die? Why did they die? When they die, we are all spring of God. God is not in the grave. Our senior brother, who brought us to God, died and got up. So those who went and died and stayed in the grave, who are they staying with? They are in another kingdom where God cannot be found. That's why they were manipulated. Don't play with manipulation. Because it's strength. Don't even play with self-deception. Because you can deceive yourself. I don't know what I'm saying. Genesis chapter 3. People, as we are leading that plan, excuse me. Before God said to Adam, you are dust. Adam was already naked. You should be very careful about people that defend in your mind and they remove rope from you through conversation. People that engage your mind, demons that get your mind into, into, into removing the rope of your security. Even so, when you are frustrated, your fallen nature can originate a fallen thought to fight against yourself, inside yourself. The first battle that Eve lost was a battle of her mind. If, if, if lost trust of God she began to quarrel with God inside her heart before the serpent came to help her die so it was not a snake that killed her it was her that died maybe one or two persons sometimes frustration will be generated from your mind to make you to fight against the source of your life and because nobody have told you don't know that that time, that time frustration raised inside you is grave you're digging inside yourself when nobody knows it you go into a manner of demonic thought into frustrations into beginning to doubt things you're supposed to believe. Into beginning to fight against your confessions. Sometimes it doesn't last long. But you must not tolerate it. Because it's an antics. What the thought is doing in our life is to remove your robe. That's what Adam did. That's why he did Adam. Adam didn't know that he was tossed until he became naked. He said, he said, he said, Adam, Adam, where are you? He said, okay, I'm no longer there. He said, why are you no longer there? He said, I'm naked. He said, who told you? Who told you, Adam, when you go ahead, that you are naked? Who told you? Who told you? God, because God now knew where... <laughs> let, me tell, let me tell you something. Every life has where it is tied. God knew that the life, the endless life Adam had, was tied to a, a command, a covenant word. God said, when he said, oh God, I'm no longer there. 
I'm naked. God said, did you eat? Did you? Because God knew that only way Adam can know that he's naked is through eating one particular food. He said, did you eat it? Hear me. If you are here, you will ever be great in your life. You must know where your greatness is tied to. God and Adam knew that to stay with that diet is tied to a particular don't eat it. So when God, when Adam says, oh God, I'm naked now, God knew that Adam ate something. Excuse me. I said in one of my books, it's not that the tree of knowledge and of knowledge of good and evil was bad, but it was a standard that God needed to set for Adam to put value to his life. Every valuable life should be lived in a way. God told Adam, I said, if you must not die in this Eden, there is a way this life must be lived. Why I make you see Genesis chapter 3? Is there anything you know about how you must live? Me, Chris Christian, I already know how I must live. I'm, I've already gone far in my life. Now, now, that life I have and the way I must live it has my destiny. I don't shake. Because there is something that shakes me. The Bible said the world will pass away, including Nigeria. This Nigeria will pass away. Africa will pass away. There's another world. I don't belong here. So why would I work for here? For somebody's a Nigerian government. How can I work for a government that will fade? I am sufficient in myself. One day when Jesus was in when Jesus was in in, 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 in on earth, they told him, I said, Herod is looking for you. They want to kill you. He said, go and tell the fox. He said, go and tell that fox that I will walk the first day and walk the second day. He said, the third day I will perfect my job. Did Jesus go about and was, was did he come to earth and was Galavatron up and down and was looking for help from Herod? When he was born because of the illumination or the brightness of his unique star, Herod knew that his government would collapse. So somebody that you are better than you don't go and beg him for things. Except if you are corrupt. Somebody said, oh, we, we, need to build a, we need to build a church that can take 2 million people at the sitting. We need money. I said, stop that. I don't need to be a, build a church that is more valuable than me. Stop that. When Jesus came to the earth, we, we had about 2 billion followers all over the world. He didn't build one church. What do you mean by church? When he died, people who were smaller than him began to build church. I said when he died, people that are what? Smaller, smaller people. So they building cathedrals. His servants began to build church. The one that owned church, he didn't build one. He didn't build one block. God forbid me on the earth appreciate students. I'm a house, not me with hands. I'm what? The message I'm preaching is a message of a particular house. A house that cannot be subdued. A house that can die. So something that, that must fade away cannot be presented before me as a blessing. I have everything I need in myself. Oh, somebody didn't hear what I said? I said I have everything I need. He is with me now. And I saw you are too. Stop appearing like a beggar to people. Wake up your value from inside yourself. I said, stop appear, appearing beggarly to people. Begging things for people will not take you anywhere. Excuse me. Write down your paper. Begging people things you beg from people will never take you anywhere. I said this you beg from people will never take you to anywhere. What will take you to anywhere is what evolves from yourself. God look at that and he said, you, How do you know that you are dust? He said, Did you eat it, Mr. Man? And I said, Oh, he said, Oh, he said, I can't my wife. Now she cuts up. Is your organ my wife? 
I told you that Adam married only when he fell in glory. Adam married. Adam married when he fell in glory. He was sleeping. He's only sleeping men that married. The guy was the guy fell asleep. Now excuse me. He, the, the guy fell asleep and then and he fell he, he, he came down from glory and started snoring. And then the strange desire to marry came upon him. Somebody said, and that sleeping was from, was from God. I said, when Adam was feeling sleepy, God made him to sleep. Before God helped Adam to sleep, the guy was already feeling. And those who doesn't know God said it was his wife that deceived him. No. The wife that deceived Adam came from the Adam. Adam fell. When the Adam was deceived, when he started sleeping. So the woman that deceived Adam and the serpent is a progressive manifestation of a man that came down. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? Now the consequences of nakedness. Consequences. The consequences of nakedness. When people are naked, they grow. And the people don't get naked until they are grown. They are, they are the robe. The robe of honor is removed from them. And they, there, is a, there, there, there are two types of destiny. The destiny of those who are wearing clothes and the destiny of naked people. God does not give people destiny until he clothes them. And Satan don't give people destiny until he removes their robe. So wearing robe and uh, being naked have destiny. In the garden of Eden, Adam couldn't see that he was naked until he removed the robe. And then the Bible says, you are dust now. You know the story. In chapter 7 of the book of Genesis, Joseph didn't, didn't dream until he was clothed. In 16 of Revelation, the Bible says, the nakedness will not appear. The, the, the nakedness will not what? Nakedness will not appear because the nakedness appeared because or oh, shame came because he's naked. If you want to be free from shame, free, want to be what? Free from shame. Put on your group. Somebody who is clothed, you don't expose him to shame. And then hear me, clothing is synonymous to impartation. Learning, what we are doing, fellowship, right fellowship, clothing. In that seven, Joseph didn't come to honor until he was clothed. God doesn't give men honor until he clothes them. And Satan doesn't torture people until he removes their robe. So why I preach this, where do you belong? There is something I want to, an analogy I want to bring from Eden into 2 Corinthians chapter 4. As long as Adam was in Eden, there was no death for him. And in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 10, the Bible said that this life of God is in our mortal body. That is, that is, is the way. This is the way life is not only in the spirit. Some people like saying this in the spirit. But the Bible said that that is the life you have in your body. Now when the life of God comes to human body, it becomes immortality. Let me show you that particular scripture. I don't want to play with. Let us look at four scriptures. One, one, then I'll begin to close. Have I blessed somebody in this service? Have I blessed somebody? If you're looking at me, the Bible said, I keep before you life and death. In 1319 of the book of Deuteronomy, I keep before you locusts and life and death. He said, I encourage you to choose life that you might live. When he said, I keep life, I keep before you life and death. Why you are thinking of choosing life or death? He came back and said, Listen, choose life. That means that there is something about life. And choice. In 1821, there is something about life and tongue. He said the power to live or die is attached to tongue. That is why if you want to know how big or small people are, you will know it either when they are happy or angry. Let me say again, I said, if you want to know how big or small 
people are. You know it when they are when they are either very happy or very very angry. People don't hide themselves when they are angry. So if you are here, you have a friend. Pray for her to be angry one day, very, very angry. So that you can really know what is in her heart. A lot of people pretend when they are not angry. They pretend when they are when they are not very happy. So when they are happy, they start saying stupid things. And when they are angry, they also say stupid things. Very stupid things. Now those stupid things they said, were, they were inside them. They were inside that being. Waiting for a time she will depend on anger to reveal who she is. Church, I'm fine in this house. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. Always bearing about in the body of dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Number 11. He said, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal body. He said that the life of Jesus might be made manifest where in your now i said when the life is made manifest in your vile body huh? in in that body that we call it immortality not in the spirit now made manifest in your mortal body that the life the zoe life that that life that can die appeared on your body That life that can't die. Not in your spirit now. Now, the, the life appear in your body from conversion. Hear me because I'm about to round up. In the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, 51, God began to separate people. He said, I show you now a mystery. I, we shall not all sleep, but we shall change. Now, he said, we shall not all that means it is not meant for everybody to die. But those that shall not die shall take a change to bring the life of God in their spirit to their mortal body. Which is immortality. That this dying nature shall put on immortality. When corruption has put on incorruptible. He said when this is completed, the scripture in Isaiah chapter 25, that death is swallowed up in victory, shall be accomplished. There is no scripture that men should not accomplish. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians, I read before, it said Moses brought fair. Because he has to do something to bring what is hidden. Hidden. Excuse me. Why I ran up, I wanted to listen. It is very, very wrong for men to want to wait for God to make them immortal. God doesn't make men immortal. He didn't make Jesus immortal. He didn't make Elijah immortal. He gave them life. The, the, the eternal life is the gift of God. In 6 23 of the book of Romans, the gift of eternal life is from God. He said the wages of sin is there, but the gift of eternal life is that life is the gift of God. Now, but immortality comes from the activity of men. Because when you hear immortal, that is I can't die. Every immortal man was mortal. So the word immortality is taken from mortality. So the difference between immortality, between mortality and immortality is what happens as corruption takes on incorruptibility as men look at the mirror of the word of God in their heart. Take mirror. I came that you might have life. I am not here sweating and making it for because I, I need to preach. I am 
am bringing a deliverance into your spirit. I am bringing an impartation to your generation. I am here to resist the enemy of this army. To make an announcement to the 15th of March. The grave has no power over this army. Not only the grave has no power over this army. Sickness cannot rule here. Infirmities have no rule here. Whatever that died in your life shall come alive. In the name of Jesus. Every destiny that died in your life shall come alive. Whatever the enemy stole from you shall be vivified. If you are here, you are asleep in your spirit. I wake you up from the sleep. I say you are up from your sleep. In the name of Jesus, I can hear your amen. Let me ask you to listen. The greatest form of dominion is the dominion of immortality. If you are here and you want to have dominion, go to your office tomorrow, your shop, and keep on saying, I can't die. I can't die. I can't die. That is the highest, that is the greatest utterance. That is the highest form of prayer. The man that a man says, I can't die. When you say, I can't die, you will leave the realm of man to the realm of God. Because it is only God that can say, that say they can't die. The moment that you say, I can't die, you're no longer a man. You're saying, I'm not man. I'm not man. I'm not man. I'm not man. And I don't care how weak you are. God will guide your destiny from your utterance. There is no salvation for souls of men until they say it. So both your heart and your lips is important for believing and confession. Very, very important. I don't know what I'm saying. There, there are two scriptures I want to show you, beautiful scriptures. Listen, listen when I say it, I will, start, I will go to the bread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He said, if you eat me, you can't die. He said, look at your fathers. Look at your fathers. He said, they ate manna in the wilderness. Listen. Sometimes, the blessings of God will be too much for some people that they do believe it will be difficult. Some of us that are here, we are separated onto different kinds of honor and majesty. But because of where you are coming from, you find it difficult to apprehend what God is saying about you. Because of maybe former damages, the way you are depressed. The way things people, the, the, things people have told in the time past, things you have believed about yourself in the time past, you find it difficult to say, the past is gone. God look at Moses, Jesus looked at them and said, I am not like Moses. I'm different. He gave you manna, your father's manna, and they ate and died. He said, the bread I give prevent man from dying. This is the bread. The broken bread. He said, this bread that is my life. Let me show you scripture before I go to that bread and then close. Excuse me, if you are here in this service and you have entangled your soul self so much with things that you don't need, I am standing at the altar to get free. You are free. You are here in the realm of the spirit. You are being accused by demons. In the realm of the spirit, you are kept down by demons. In the realm of the spirit, that they, 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 they tie you to where you don't belong. Maybe through conversation, maybe through, it, maybe in the time past, through fellowship, maybe through blood exchange, maybe through, maybe through, maybe through unnecessary vows, maybe through utterances. You maybe through bad, maybe through marriages. You, you took your life into the deep of a divine of a few oath. I stand here that by the power of the blood in the blood of Jesus to tell you there is no oath that is bigger than the blood. I don't care who tie you anywhere. In this service, whether they tie you to your husband's the house, in Crawford, tie you to your family house in Crawford, tie you in Lagos, took you to an evil oath in your office, chained you in the realm of the spirit. Through, in, through informal contact and evil out. in this one service I saw the energy of God. Anywhere you are here, maybe they tie you to a grave. Maybe one person here, hear me. Maybe one person here, before you met me, you went to where men died and took son and said, Thus you did that this man is, and thus I am. If you have done that, you are going to pass through deliverance in this service. I say, if you have ever gone to where people, dead people are, and because people were carrying sand, and you're carrying sand, I said, because people were carrying sand, and you too, you're carrying sand, because you didn't know, and the foolish ignorant men were saying, thus we are, thus shall we be, 
And a man who didn't know what I had just preached on living forever began to say that this death that this man died is a share everybody will take. That the dead man have taken his own share. That all, all of them there will take their own share. And then they carry sand and you carry sand. In this service you are free. I say in this service you are free. Every time of your life to the grave is broken. I say it's broken. I say it is broken. Heaven and the earth shall pass away. But those that have the word of God, they shall live forever. They're going to lift your hand and say, Lord, I am alive forever. I don't have grave anywhere. I am different. The land of Nigeria will pass away. Africa will pass away. I deliver myself from that utterance. Call your name and say, Christ, Christ, that you are not dust. You are not dust. You are not dust. You are not dust. Because I mean, death will not sting you. Death will not sting your business. Death will not sting your job. Death will not sting your destiny. Oh, death, where is your power? I cannot be stinged because I have the life of God. I didn't hear you say death. My name is Chris Christian. Call your name. I confess with my mouth that you have no power over me. Death, listen to me. You are not a mystery. You are just from devil. Uh, you are just from the devil. And you and the devil, you are under my feet. My life is my life. I can't die. Because I don't have grave anywhere. Call your name and say, Chris, Christian. You and your, and your family have no grave anywhere. Not only that you can die. Nothing around you will die. Say, Chris, Christian. The influence of death cannot sting you. Open your mouth in one minute and say, I cannot be sting. The sting of death. The sting of death. Because I'm a time is a 